So now in fact we do have shadows, ray trace shadows and production quality rendering. You'll notice that the shadow is completely black. Well, we're going to help this out a little bit, a couple of different ways. You'll notice that the shading on the ball here is completely black, and the cast shadow on the ground is also completely black. So we're going to deal with these one at a time. Let's store this image for comparison. Minimize that window, close the render settings. And I'm going to go back to my light, select the light, and back in the shadow attributes, I can set the shadow color to a neutral gray. And now it'll be a transparent shadow. We won't see solid black. Back in my render view, do another quick test render. And now you'll see we're seeing the grain of the boards coming through. So the shadow color is now non-black, and we're able to see a transparent shadow. All right, so we also need some ambient light on the ball because it's looking a bit non-convincing because it's too dark. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna save this image and minimize once again. And now finally, we're gonna create our second light, which is an ambient light. Create, lights, ambient light. And it's created right at the origin. And it doesn't have a locator scale. It's always displayed the same size on the screen. So I'm gonna move it. And in fact, this one, I'm gonna move down below the floor. Because what I wanna get here is I wanna have the effect of light bouncing off of the ground plane and striking the ball. So I'll place my ambient light down here. I'll go to its color, and if this is going to be skylight or you know light that's sort of the complementary color of the main or key light, I might choose to make this ambient light slightly blue. I can go into its color settings, just make that ever so slightly blue. Click accept. The intensity probably shouldn't be 100% intensity or, or value of one. Let's see what it looks like. We'll go back to our render view and do another render. So with an intensity of one, we're getting too much light. We're getting too much in our ambient light. So I'm gonna turn that down to let's say 0.5 and do another rendering. So that's a lot more convincing. Finally, on this ambient light, I've got the ambient shade attribute. And this is kind of important because what it does is it controls the directionality of the ambient light. So ambient actually has two different lights in one. It has a light that's located at a certain location. And it's got a light that's sort of located everywhere, coming from all directions. So it's sort of two for one. And this slider is the balance between those two. With ambient shade set to zero, and I do another rendering. Basically, we're not getting any directionality. The light is sort of coming from everywhere and it's kind of washing things out. That's with ambient shade set to zero. If it's set to one, then the ambient light acts like an omni light or an omnidirectional light or a point light that's coming from this location. So I'll do a render of that. So this is with ambient shade set to one, and this is with ambient shade set to zero. The default was about 0.4. I'm gonna set it to maybe a little bit less, 0.3. So that'll produce a kind of even wash. And we'll do another rendering. So that's looking pretty good to me. I'd like to do a couple more test renders before I actually commit. So I'm gonna go ahead and minimize my render view. I'm going to save my scene as a new file name once again, version 8. So I'm just going to do a couple test renders at different points in time to check my work. So on frame 7, I'll click render. So far so good. We'll go forward, let's say, to after the bounce, let's say frame 18 or something. 
and do a test render, just make sure it looks good there too. Looks all right. Um, let's go down to frame 48 and let's see if the shadow is in the frame or not. That's the one thing I was kind of concerned about before. So back in my render view, I'll click again to render. And in fact, this shadow has cleared the frame by frame 48. So that's good. Now we've completed the lighting and we're ready to do our final batch rendering. I'm going to go back into the render settings window because so far I've only been rendering single frames. Now I want to render a whole sequence of frames and that's called a batch render. I've already set in my Maya software tab production quality with ray tracing on. In my common tab, I've already set my resolution or image size and which camera is renderable. And now I need to determine the output for the files. So up here you'll see path, and this is listing the path to where these files are going to be saved. So I've got a very long path here, so let me make this more obvious. There we go, drag that all the way out. So the path is going into my current project images. And it's gonna be saving just by default a, a file that corresponds to the scene file name. The scene file is ball08. Well, we want to give this a proper name, so I'm going to go where it says file name prefix, and I'll call this one bounce. And I'm going to choose which image file format Maya is going to save to. So the default is the Maya image file format or Maya native IFF. So the IFF format is supported by Adobe and other software vendors, but we're actually going to be using QuickTime to do our movie compression later, and QuickTime doesn't support IFF. So instead, I'm going to choose TIFF, and that's just a more or less generic image file format that's common with desktop publishing. Then, in the field labeled Frame Animation Extension, I want to choose a naming convention for my files. Maya is going to render out each frame as a single individual file. So I'm actually going to have 48 images stored separately instead of a single movie. And they're going to be numbered. So here's where you get to choose the numbering system. And what we want to choose is name.number.extension. That's very important that you choose extension at the end, otherwise Windows and other operating systems are not going to be able to understand what the file is. So we're going to choose name.number.extension. So now up here you will see file name bounce1.tiff to bounce10.tiff. And we'll also need to set the frame range down here. So we're going to go up to frame 48. And that doesn't happen automatically. Maya does not change the renderable frame range when you change your animation timeline range. They're dealt with separately. Good, so we got bounce1.tiff to bounce48.tiff. And if I want, I can make it 640 by 480 once again. And just doing one last check to make sure everything looks good. And I'm going to then save. I'm just going to overwrite what I had because all I've done is I've changed the render settings. So I'm clicking save. I'm going to close that window. And now I'm ready to do the batch render. 